Um, we're telling your followers that you've started a live video. Okay. Oh, so okay. on the bottom, do you see it says add a comment? Oh. And next to that, do there's really a see? camera? Yes. Yes. Okay. I see all of that. <laughs> Can you guys should I push on should I push on Dorinda's little circle, Amber? Hi all, we're trying to figure this out. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> I'm trying to get Lorelai here. Come in, Lorelai. <laughs> we will get there. I promise. Uh oh, oh, Amber, went somewhere. Hey all. Still trying to get Lorelai here. Oh, no. okay. can you hear me? Yes, now I can hear you, yes. Okay, so do you see it says add a comment on the bottom? Yeah, I see comment, yes. So next to it, there should be, there's a little camera with a okay. plus sign. Yes. So then you can type in there, Macmillan, um, dot audio. M-A-C-F-I-L-L-A-N. Okay, send request. Oh, there you go. Is Lorelai still here? Yes. Go live with Dorinda. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Dorinda, I'm so glad I didn't have the responsibility for that. I was in full panic mode. I was like, this is not working. I, I see nothing that you're talking about. <laughs> I'm turning you up. Um, <laughs> hi, so nice to see you. Well, hello, everyone. Look at all the little hearts. Yay. Let me let me get off of this Zoom call. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Amber. Because I think that there was an echo. Okay. Okay. We're going to try this again. Okay. Oh, <gasps> We're here. Oh, look how pretty you are. Cheers. Oh, no, you look so pretty. I love your hair. Thank Super you. cute. Yes, it's uh I'm at the B I'm I'm on vacation in Florida. And this, <sighs> so we're doing it. so I'm sunburned, so I have a lot of makeup on. <laughs> so I don't blind anybody. <laughs> <laughs> and humidity is giving you lovely curls, so it's fantastic. Yes, I love the curls. <laughs> but I'll go back oh. to when it'll be, you know. <laughs> This, this is my first uh, Instagram Live. Is it your first one? It is my first. I don't know if you could tell that, but it is. <laughs> I'm glad I'm your first. <laughs> um, yeah, it's really, uh, now that I'm here, it's really fun. I'm liking, and we can, oh, we can see things, and we see people joining. This is so cool. I'm sorry. I'm like from another planet. Um, <laughs> you know, much more about the Twitter. Um, <laughs> this is new to me. So um, your book is coming out. Yes. Any minute, right? Yes, yes, the 27th. Yay. Yay. And the <laughs> audio comes out the same day. It's a sim pub, isn't it? So uh, they publish at the same time. Yes. I had so much fun with this series. It was quite um, different from the Charlie series. And I wanted to ask you, I was thinking about what was the shift? Because this is not a paranormal series right. yet. <laughs> I never know. <laughs> but uh, I just wonder, was that, what was that like shifting to the real world after having this massive universe at your disposal? You know, it, it made me realize how spoiled I am, first of all. Um, because when you write paranormal, I mean, of course, you still have to follow the rules. Like if there's a police procedural type thing, you know, but you can always just throw in something paranormal and fix everything. <laughs> And this time I couldn't do that. And I had to do so much research and I have um, so many people. I was asking questions. Um, I'm good friends with our sheriff, um, his wife, uh, and I went to school. And so I was just constantly, she would ask the sheriff questions for me. And, you know, I'd be like, so can you do this? Can this, would this really happen? Could this happen? And there was just so much research and, um, it was very interesting. It's been a very interesting experience. I have realized how spoiled I am. And um, yeah. Because <laughs> I was going to ask about the, the, uh, the sheriff-y stuff and, and how you uh, 
uh, research that, but to have a have a tame sheriff's sheriff on your books is right, right, yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's those little things you have to be careful for. So his wife, um, we call her Ushi, um, Ur Ursula Parker. She actually read both of both the uh, Bad Day for Sunshine and A Good Day for Chardonnay, just to kind of make sure that I wasn't messing up. And she did find little things. It's those little things that you don't think about. Um, like at one point I had the sheriff's department and she said, it's not a department, it's an office. Oh. I was like, oh, oh, little stuff like that. I wouldn't even have thought of, you know? So I was like, okay. <laughs> Making a little note. Is that yeah. true everywhere or particularly in that part of the world? I don't know. That is a good question. Oh, that's nuts. No, that's really, cause you say police department, don't you? Yeah. You say police department. And she said the sheriff's office is not a department of another organization. It's just, mm -hmm. I thought that's very interesting. I did not know that. <laughs> I've made a note now. Yes. It's going in the brain bank. Well, there's not much room left <laughs> up there, so I have to write it down. Something's got to go. Either all the plots of every episode of I Love Lucy or something not so important. So <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, I, I found it... Uh, Coming off the Charlie series, it was, I found it really different to record, to narrate. And um, I think one of the particular challenges I had, and this is why I was very glad you wrote this, you're writing this series in the third person, because I wanted Sunshine to be different from Charlie. They have, they're sisters in some ways. They both have quite a sarcastic sense of humor. And that would be harder to do if it were a first person narration. So it being third, it gives me a little bit of flexibility to give her a slightly different voice, a huskier voice. Um, so that was, that was my particular challenge. Nice, nice, I love it. Besides missing, missing everyone from the other world, of course, but the, the, you know, there are new people to love in this world. Why? Right. Well, thank you. Um, I really, I wanted, I was worried that Sunshine would just be you know, a different version of Charlie. She'd be too similar. Um, and I have had comments going both ways. I have had some people say in reviews or something that, oh, it's just Charlie in a different world. And, but I will say most of them are like, oh, she's completely different from Charlie. So that made me happy because I really tried to make her a very different person, her own person and her own, you know, world and entity and, and, um, you know, and I do have a couple of Charlie in the first book, especially a couple of Charlie Easter eggs, just for those, you know, <laughs> had to throw those in there. <laughs> but yeah, I really like how Sunshine's world has turned out and I like her family and I just think that she's really special. So <laughs> I do too. I think she, uh, one of the differences I see between my fundamental kind of difference is, uh, Charlie had no boundaries and no barriers. Do you know, she, there was nothing she wouldn't do. And Sunshine, I think, because she has a responsible job, she lives in the real world and has her, her uh, child, um, is more grounded in that way. And she does have, I can't call them limits, that's why we call them boundaries and, and that kind of thing. She's um, more socialized, I think, in that way. Yeah. But she's also, but she has Charlie's sense of fun, for sure. I hope so. That, and, and that was part of it. And I really wanted her to have fun with her parents and with, well, with everyone around her to have that sense of, of funness, if that's a word, <laughs> but yet keep her grounded. And I will say, I still tend to cross that line a little bit. And thank God I have an incredible editor, <laughs> um, uh, Alexander C. Holster, who she she reigns she she kind of like rears me back in and um just says you know she's a professional charlie could do this but sunshine can't so i think oh man you're so right and i it's like i know that when i'm writing it but i kind of see i'm like a kid in a way i feel like i have got to see how far i can push those limits <laughs> push those boundaries <laughs> yeah yeah uh, um I'm glad, I, and I think a lot of uh, your fans are as well, glad that you've kept the little rubrics at the, at the beginning of the chapter, because right. those were, were, became, were so popular in the Charlie series. So although they're different in this one, they're all about Del Sol, town, um, you kept that tradition, and then I love them. They really yeah. make me laugh. Uh, at first I thought, well, I can't do that with any other series. I thought, well, why not? Why can't it just be a 
I'm still writing it. So yeah, I brought it back. <laughs> I did. I did. So uh, the other thing that you that is in common is some of the spicy stuff. <laughs> um, <laughs> that has not changed. <laughs> the first book was a little tamer right. in the series. And then the second one, I made this, you know, the usual, I, I, I don't know why my engineers are always young men, but <laughs> inevitably <laughs> they, um, they're in for quite an education. Yes, those poor things. They <laughs> I feel for them. <laughs> yeah. Know, that was part of it. I asked, you know, my agent and my editor, I was like, how hot do we want to go with this? I mean, do we want on the page or are we just totally skipping that? And, you know, uh, my, my editor's so funny. She's like, I don't know. I think sex on the page is good. Yeah, I think it's good. I'm like, okay. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> you certainly do. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I had I had fun with that. And I'm so, you know, it's, it's weird because Levi is so different from Reyes, just like Charlie oh. and Sam. And, but I, I just, he, but then in, in, some ways he's similar and I don't know I think I write a certain type of hero and he's just I just love him <laughs> I love Levi he's a little bit tortured yeah. I think too one thing I um that I will say for your erotic scenes that I've read is they're always in the context of a loving relationship and um with 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 quite a bit of friction <laughs> and um so I think Levi's in, in that mold, certainly the way Charlie and Reyes uh, struggled to get along at some points in their story. I think that might be happening too with Sunshine and Levi. Oh, why did you name her? I have a friend named Sunshine and I wonder why did you name her Sunshine? That's so funny. Okay, so this is uh, an interesting story. So I, I was on the phone with my agent. We had like two or three phone calls and trying to decide what I was going to do after Charlie. And I pitched everything I had. <laughs> I mean, like, not really, because I have hundreds of stories. But I pitched what I felt like was my best stuff, what I could offer. And she was just not having, she's like, no. And I mean, she was totally nice about it. But she wants me to succeed as much as I want me to, you know, for both of us. And, and she's like, no, I'm not really feeling that. No, that's not quite what I'm looking for. You know, all this stuff. So we, it was our third phone call. It was the very end. We were calling my editors the next day and um, pitching the new project, which we didn't have. <laughs> and I was like, and I literally, I, it, what, it just popped into my head that, that I had remembered this one. And I said, you know, I have this one about this female sheriff who has a teen daughter and, and she's the sheriff of this small town in New Mexico. And, you know, this girl goes missing and all this stuff. And, and she's like, oh, okay, I like that. And I said, well, it's kind of like the Gilmore Girls meets Fargo. And that's it. That's <laughs> Tell me about that. And I had nothing. I didn't, that was as far as I had gotten. And the, the notebook that I was writing on, that I was making notes on, was it was like Sunshine Press or something. And I feel really bad about this. Because uh -huh. I was like, I feel like I lied to my agent. I didn't lie. I was just making it up as I went. And I said, well, uh, her name is Sunshine. <laughs> that's where that came from. <laughs> oh, that's like Kaiser Soze. That's not that's <laughs> <like> Fargo. <laughs> Kaiser Soze, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I love it. And then everything went from there. And I... So every main character, their first, middle, and last names has something to do with the sun. The town is named after the sun. All the businesses. Oh, yeah. it's, it's very interesting. Even Le Levi, um, his full name is Levant, and that means the sun in some language. I, don't, I couldn't tell you Fair. which one. <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah, something to do with oh. the sun. Oh. Yeah, so I had fun that's, with it. it yeah, that's going to that's yeah, be one I'm going to look for that. Uh, yeah. In the next one. No, I didn't even notice that. Yep. Hmm. Yeah. Even like Elaine and, and Aurora, the daughter Ari. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was, it was just so fun. I just love this series. And, but I feel like we've talked about me a lot, that we should talk about you. Go on then. What do you want to know? <laughs> 
I just, there's so much. And I even ask some people and they just love asking questions, the narrators. So many of my readers, listeners, um, like you are their absolute favorite narrator. And they're like, oh, I want to know this, I want to know that. So that I have all kinds of questions. But the okay. awesome. Mm -hmm. How did you get started in narration? How did that come about? Yes, the, uh, this is well-trodden ground. It was, it was quite some time ago because I'm an actor and it, it kind of is a natural fit for an actor to do this, but it was just a fluke. There was a guy I was dubbing, uh, he had a, some kind of Spanish TV series and I was dubbing it in English form. And then he also got this other job. It was a book of this many years ago of American short stories. So I simply had the right accent and he was really nervous about it because it's a hard thing to do. I didn't know. I was stupid. I'd never done it. So he booked this whole day for us to do this. And, and I just found it easy. I mean, I just found I could do it. And we did it in like, we were finished by lunchtime. So he said, well, we may as well go to lunch, darling. And he took me to a very expensive lunch. And I thought, hey, this is a good career. Little did I know, it doesn't always, <laughs> you don't always get taken to rules or somewhere fancy for lunch. But um, it was a pretty good, it was a really nice first job to do. And I fell into it, like I fall into many things in my life. That is so cool. I absolutely love mm. that. That is so neat. And how did you choose Sunshine? Well, <laughs> I, how did I choose her? I didn't choose it. Well, you, it would have killed you if you let anyone else do her. <laughs> no, of course. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, I'm, I love recording anything you write. Um, we had... I had so much fun with the Charlie series and love it so much. Love your writing, love your character. Your characters are so much fun to play. And so of course this was like, please, yes, please. So no, no decision was made. It's just automatic. Very cool. Well, and you know that we love you and I was hoping so much, so much that they would get you. And, and of course I had to voice my opinion and say, I don't think anybody else should be doing this. Oh, I'm glad you did. That's really nice. Well, one of the things my readers love is that that even though you are a female narrator, you do men so sexy. <laughs> like, I don't know how you do it, but it's you just <laughs> forget. You forget, and you're there at the moment, and Levi is just dripping off the page or out of the earphones, however you want to say. And oh, I just. It, you just are very good at your job. <laughs> well, no, thank you. I think, and, and part of that, of course, is in the writing. I think sexiness is in the characters are written sexy. I, I think uh, just from a technical point of view, it happens that <clears throat> it's a benefit to have a low voice for a woman to be able to do men's voices. And that's just technical. And my voice is quite low. So it's, I can drop slightly lower without it sounding too forced. Um, but their sexiness, I think, comes through the writing. Yeah, well, thank it inspires you. inspires me. Thank you. Yeah, and I love I love how you do Charlie and Sunshine. I just you have that huskiness to your voice that I just think is is just so thank cool. you. Just oh I just it's so rich, I guess you could say. And then oh, you, thank you did my young adult series, which I was just floored at how you just sound like a teen. I'm like Well, that was a challenge, I think. Yeah. And I remember because when you asked, I remember saying to um, I was my age or the public, whoever, I just said, you know, it's been a while. And it was written first person, which is, again, is for people who might be watching. It's if, if it's written in, if the narrator is telling the story, if it's written in the first person, it's harder to fudge a voice. So if it's third person, it's easier. Um, because you're not telling the entire story in that voice. So with your, your young adults, or your high school series, I was worried. And then, but then I decided it's about the spirit. You, you, you try to capture the spirit of it. It's not that you're forcing, I mean, I did slightly tighten the voice to make it sound a little bit younger, but it's more about conveying the attitude and, of whatever age you're playing. Yeah. yeah, that was a challenge, that series. That was fun too. Well, that was a while ago, that was fun. Was. It was a while ago. It was so yeah. I remember freaking out. <laughs> like, oh my God, this one's amazing. <laughs> oh. oh. What sort of preparation do you do? How do you prepare? I have, um, that I always do it the same way. It's just, I read the book once, 
I have a piece of paper. Um, oh, I don't have one right next to me, do I? No, where on one side I put character names, the page number they first appear on. The other side is for vocabulary I have to look up. And I just write, and if any notes, if you as the author, let's say, have given a note, if you say you know, he had a smoker's voice or a bass voice, I'll, I'll write that down. If there's no indication what a character sounds like, they often tell you what they want to sound like. I find that they kind of just appear in your head with a voice. So I make my own little cryptic notes about what, what their voices will be. And then at some point, I look up all the words or ask um, you, for example, if it's a certain, a certain name I might not know how to pronounce and all that. And then I just take that piece of paper. I'm still paper. I'm still old school with that. And, and go into the studio and do it. That's cool. So, yeah. Neat. That is very neat. So whose voice, this may be a weird question, who is your favorite voice as far as in the sunshine? <laughs> okay, in this series, um, in any series I do, and especially in a uh, series that has a lot of humor like yours, I love the peripheral characters. And I have to say, because we're only two books in, I haven't settled on a complete favorite yet, but I really like Wanda Stephanopoulos. <laughs> she's, what I like is these older ladies, she's like a, in her 70s, for those of you I don't know who read the book or remember her, she's like the 70 five-year-old cougar and um i love her and i love mrs fairborn and she features quite a lot in chardonnay in this book um so i think i love those old gals i like those old gals they're fun to play because you can be a bit broader with them yeah <laughs> i love writing them they're just so fun yeah yeah fun. i could write a whole series of just them i think you know like getting into trouble <laughs> Listen, I could gradually age up and do that series for you, Dorinda. <laughs> Don't give up that idea. <laughs> fun. That would be fun. <laughs> are, you, are you working on the third book? I am. I am right now. Yes, yes. And um, I'm hoping probably I should have it done in probably three or four weeks, something like that. So, yeah. Yeah. Wow. I'm, I'm enjoying it as always. And, and, um, yeah, yeah, it's, it's hard to wrap everything up. It's supposed to just be a trilogy. Uh, we'll see. Okay. There are extenuating circumstances on another thing going on, but, um, yeah, probably just a trilogy, but yeah, I've had so much fun, so much fun. <laughs> I love this gang. I love them. Yeah. <laughs> I think, don't you think that the, the fans of people who love your books and who like the audio books, they're like the best. Oh gosh. Ever. Uh, ever. Yes. Did yeah. you call, what did you call in the Charlie series? You called them Grimlets, right? They're still God, the they're so supportive, so encouraging. I mean, I find that when they get in touch, everyone is just, oh, it kind of just makes it no, it is worthwhile, so it isn't that, but it just makes it extra, extra enjoyable and can really give you a lift sometimes if you're flagging. Absolutely. So I, I really appreciate everyone who takes the time to, yeah. to let us know. Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. And they're just, they're just, they get excited and I just, I feel like I, my main thing, and this might be weird, I don't know, but I just never want to let them down. I have this thing where I just don't ever want to let them down. I want to put out the best book I possibly can every single time. And, and you know, they're just, they're so great. They're so worth every single second, you know. They're fabulous. Yeah. <laughs> Forever, yes. yeah. Yeah. It's interesting, I was just thinking what you said about not wanting to let them down, because I think we've talked about this, and this is often what a narrator finds. As a narrator, you really don't want to let your author down or your listeners down. And so I, I understand that. Right. It's, um, yeah, that kind of responsibility. Yeah. yeah, it's so neat. It's so neat. Now, where, you are in London, right? I am. It's nighttime. Yes. I've got saying. full makeup on at 11 at night. I'm thinking I might go to a club afterwards. I don't know. <laughs> it just seems a shame to waste it. Right. But I might have pajama bottoms on. I'm not saying. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I had and, to, and you're in Florida, so yes, I yeah, I was sunburned and I had to put a ton of makeup on too, so I understand. <laughs> so 
So we have standards to maintain. Yes, we do. We do. Absolutely. (laughs) Hey, one of the things um, uh, in the, in uh, Chardonnay that I like is that sometimes parents decide she needs a boyfriend (laughs) and they start acting like a dating agency, don't they? Now, I know you're long married, but have, did you ever, did you have any hideous first dates? Oh, when yeah. you were... yes, I really did. I, I, like the worst, the worst. And two different times, I, I cannot drink alcohol. I've learned that because of two of my first dates. <laughs> <laughs> One was really, <sighs> even, it was a pre-date. We, we weren't even dating yet. And when I met my husband, and uh, we had kind of chatted a couple of times. And then, yeah, he, he introduced me to Jack Daniels. And no, <laughs> it was bad. And yet, we still dated after that because uh, it was bad. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so the fact that he came back and, you know, he just said, yeah, no more alcohol for you. So we're good. We know, we know not to go there. Mm-hmm. And we have been together. You can't love you when. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> can't love you when your head's in the toilet bowl. He doesn't deserve you, you know. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That's true. <laughs> that is- I had a lot of bad first dates when I was young. <laughs> I had a ton. I was thinking about it today, thinking about dates and remembering one of the classic worst. I was very young. I was about 18 or 19. And I've, I've always liked older men. Um, because I always thought, well, if they ever go looking for a younger woman, then there you are. You're, and I dated this guy. He was about in his early 30s, and I was 18 or 19. And he took me. Now, the benefit of dating an older man, he showed up. He was really nicely dressed. He had his polyester shirt on buttoned. He had his man bag, and he had a really fancy car. And he took me to a restaurant. And he was really energetic he was really animated and he had this theory about it was like insane it was something about how your you know if you your brain just slams shut and you can't have the perception that the world is providing and he would I just and if I said anything he'd be like your mind is shutting down your mind is shutting down and it was like oh my god so eventually I just said oh I'm <laughs> I, oh I have to go to work early tomorrow can we go home so we're in the car driving home and we get pulled over by the police because there is a warrant out for my date's arrest. Oh. So as they're about to take him away, he gives me his car keys and his man bag. And he says, take this. I'm like, I didn't want them. And he's very insistent. No, take these, go to my parents' house. He rattles off the address. Take my car, go to my parents' house, tell them what's happened. They handcuff him, put him in the car. So there, it's like after midnight, I'm alone on a dark road with the keys to this fancy car and like, and this man bag. And this was all like before sat navs and everything. You just sort of had to know where streets were and just drive around peering at the numbers. So eventually I found the parents' house. It's late, late, late. Ring the doorbell. Oh, wake them up. They come. I tell them what's happened. The mother bursts into tears. They invite me in. We sit there for some time. She tells me, oh, he's misunderstood. He just needs to settle down. How long have you been dating? Is it serious? All this. The phone rings eventually. The jailbird has managed to get bail. (laughs) <laughs> um, so I have to go pick him up at the police station or county. I can't quite remember. So I pick him up. He comes out, grabs a man bag off me, opens it up to show me. It's got all these little bags full of cocaine oh my- inside. <laughs> so it's like this guy, like I said, we did not have a second date. He turned me into an unno- unwitting and unknowing drug mule. And I thought, oh, my God. I think that was probably the worst date I ever had. That was pretty bad. Yeah, you win. Absolutely. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You get the I think a little Jack Daniels. Oh. I won't worry about it. <laughs> yeah. Gosh, that's awful. You poor thing. <laughs> oh. You learn, right? Right. Exactly. Exactly. Oh. Young and stupid. Oh my God. Yeah. But oh, you're right about older men. My husband is nine and a half years older than me. So yeah. <laughs> Perfect. That's yeah. a very good thing. Like I said, when he goes looking for a younger woman, there you are. 
<laughs> so you already have one. <laughs> <laughs> he already has one. Exactly. That's awesome. So cool. <laughs> Isn't it weird we don't have like a moderator or anything? No, I'm like, well, should we just keep? They kind of left us to our own devices. For how long this should even be? Or I don't know either. I could have been paying. I'm just gonna put my. I'm gonna look at my list of questions to see if there was anything else I haven't haven't um asked you that I wanted to ask you. Oh no, this was something I wanted to say to you. Um. I wanted to say and ask is that one thing I've always admired about you is you're really supportive. I've noticed on your social of other writers, especially fledgling writers, and you're so generous in your praise and so generous in your support. And I wonder what do you think is the best thing or what are some things that writers can do to support other writers, especially those writers who are starting out? You know, and absolutely. I, I'm so like, I brought belong to writers groups. Um, I, I try really hard to, especially aspiring writers, just to, because I was there for a very long time. <laughs> I haven't forgotten what that's like, you know, just to give them um, advice and direction and, and um, anything they want, any question, I answer anything. Anyone who wants to write me, I will answer you. <laughs> and just, and then, you know, once the books come out, I think, part of this is because I had so much incredible support when first grave on the right out from huge names. Like I'll never forget J.R. Ward um, read it. She called my editor the next day, Jennifer wow. just called her and she said, I love this book. I am going to do anything and everything that I can to support it. And I just would not be here without all of this support that I had. It was just amazing. All these people gave me, you know, blurbs for the book and, and um, it was just amazing. And so I just want to pay it forward, you know, <laughs> just, it's so mm -hmm. important to me. And yeah, so I try to uh, share new releases and all this kind of, you know, just the usual stuff, but but it's just, I feel like we are all sisters, you know, and we're, we're in the same boat and, you know, that, that a rising tide raises all boats. That saying, I don't know what the, <laughs> the saying is, but I just truly believe that. So, yeah. Yeah. Very Yeah. Important. I really, um, I appreciate it during, it seems, especially social media is a little dark these days sometimes. And it's just, uh, I love seeing that sense of community yeah. and of artists supporting each other. Thank so um, I praise you for that. Kudos. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, I had one more question and I'm going to have to scoot this over. Oh, yes. <laughs> Our yeah. subtlety, yes. It's all off the cuff spontaneous. <laughs> I have about uh, your favorite coffee drink. I know you're a big coffee drinker. Yeah. And well, I, at the moment, oh, yeah, carry on. I'm sorry, did you finish it? You asked me my favorite coffee drink. Yeah, what is your favorite coffee? I'm very curious. <laughs> well, at the moment, because it changes, it's, it's usually filter. I like filter, I like French roast, and but now I kind of this weird thing happened. I am not vegetarian, I'm not vegan, but I suddenly went off milk and coffee, uh, cow milk, so now I use plant milk, so I like to mix up hazelnut milk, cashew milk, and oat milk with coffee and have it over ice. Maybe with a shot of vanilla syrup if I'm being fancy. But I love iced coffee. I just, I'm very into that at the moment. We're not really having a summer here in Britain, I have to be honest, but I can pretend if I have an iced coffee. That is so cool. My um, niece and her husband and two children, her husband just got stationed in Britain. And so really? I, I get daily updates on your weather. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's like, where, okay, no, I'm not going to pry. You later, you tell me where they are. I'm interested. It's a base there. Um, Mel something. I'm not sure. Um, but yes. And she's like, you know, they don't really have summer. I don't think, I, I think our summer's over. <laughs> I was like, oh no. We, I think we had it. We did have about four days of it. Yeah. <laughs> May, I think. <laughs> it's just, no, forget it. 
that's good. Forget it. Well, rumor has it we might have two days of summer this weekend. We'll see. We'll see. Oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> you got a lot of summer in Florida. What are your temperatures like? Oh, they're so nice. It's just, and of course, being from New Mexico, I'm very used to the heat, but not the humidity. Um, but we're <sighs> much right on the water so it's not as bad you know I've been to Orlando in July and I don't recommend <laughs> that was the I I it's like you can't breathe it's just so like this weight on you this I, I'm on Anna Maria Island and it's not bad it's it's so beautiful so in love and my boys are like we gotta move here I'm like okay we'll work on it yeah someday <laughs> but it's so I don't even know what that is. I'm gonna I'm gonna Google, but it sounds beautiful. Anything with island on it sounds yes. gorgeous at the moment. The Gulf, it's on the Gulf side, so it's it's mm. really cool. Yeah, they just got hit with a very kind of a very mild hurricane. So thankfully, right before we got here, so <laughs> not too bad. It's just oh yeah, so pretty. Yeah. See, you're you're an honorary Brit. You're talking about the weather already. <laughs> this is. <laughs> This is what we do. <laughs> um, well, gosh, I, it's, this has been so fun. I want to do it again sometime because it's not as scary as I thought it would be. See, people are saying things, and I haven't been able to read them because no. they're so little. But do we, will we be able to read those later? Well, maybe. Hopefully, yeah. Hopefully we can come back yeah. and some of them. I think we'll be able to. Yeah, that'll be cool. Yeah. I mean, this is really fun. And, and anyone who's here, I, I, I want to say yay. Thank you so much for, for coming. Yeah, thank you guys so much. And thank you, Lorelai, for this. I, thank you, Dorinda. Panicking, but we got it under control. <laughs> now we know what to do next time. We're better. We're better. We're going to be such experts next time. It's going to be, it's going to go super smooth. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's so good to see you. You look really well. Um, yeah. And... Your family is, looks beautiful. Give them, give them my love. And I hope we'll speak soon. Absolutely. And Thank bye you. to everyone who came. Thank you. you guys. I see hearts going up. Oh, that's lovely. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an old hippie. <laughs> bye. <laughs>